Now, for some of you who've been watching some of my videos or reading the website or my listening to my podcast, and thank you, by the way, you'll know that for parts of my lawn, I haven't mown the grass for about 18 months now. And what I wanted to show you was that if you take on board some of the current trends like no mow may, how your lawn is likely to grow. Because I think one of the problems is that we have this Im impression of what will actually happen to the lawn grass. But whether that actually does happen is another matter. And it's we are only disappointed if our expectations don't meet our aspirations. So if your aspirations are correct, then the lawn is going to deliver what you expect it to do. But it's not going to turn into some sort of summer wildflower meadow. And there's some very good reasons why. And I'll explain that when I show you my garden. For me, this is why I have no mow may. Because I actually love the different seed heads that I get on the grass. And as you can see, it's a bit breezy today. So they're very animated and moving with the wind. But you can't see any wildflowers in here. Now, it's not that I don't want to have wildflowers or I've weeded them out. It's just that if you come down, the grass growth, because it was lawn grass, is really thick and lush. It's really hard for wildflowers to get a sort of a, a head start in amongst all this lush green growth. And this is the issue with fertilised X lawns that you allow to grow. You have to change your opinion of what the lawn should be rather than think it's going to automatically turn into some kind of beautiful meadow. You're not. You're going to get a lot of thick lush green grass but you get a myriad of different seed heads. Now for me that adds interest in the garden but you've got to know what's coming otherwise you're going to be disappointed. So all I do, as you can see, is I mow some paths through the ground that I can walk along. And these are, I go up one way with the mower and down the other way. So you need to keep the edges clean and neat, otherwise it does look a bit messy. So this is what you will get. It has a beauty all by itself, but it isn't a wildflower meadow. Now, if you want to get a wildflower meadow, what you will need to do is probably remove some areas of this, this actual lawn grass and insert or seed a wildflower meadow in an area that you've cleaned of the lawn grass because it's simply just not going to get headway through this thick, lush growth. So if you're going to change how you cut your grass or change part of the lawn, you need to know what the positives are and what the downsides are, because it's not right for everybody. So obviously, if you're not mowing the grass, you're spending less time on garden maintenance, and that's a plus for some people. But more importantly, allowing the, the grass to grow produces the seed heads. You will attract more insects into the garden, you will attract more butterflies, you'll attract more moths. If you do that, you then attract more predators. So you get more birds coming into the garden. I have woodpeckers landing on the grass now quite regularly. You'll also get more bats flying overhead because of the insects flying around at night time. So the garden becomes a better, more biodiverse habitat. You'll provide habitats for voles and mice to, to run around in the garden. Now, for some of you, you might not want that, but that's what this will do. Now, this type of approach to your lawn isn't right for everybody, and I perfectly get that. In fact, I would suggest that you don't use no mow may in your main part of your garden where maybe the kids are running or the dogs are, are, are running around. It doesn't create the kind of garden that kids can run through the grass with. So maybe this is better for a front garden or for part of the garden that you know you're not going to regularly use. And one of the things that you will find that you get more of are ants. Because the ground is less disturbed, you're, mowing, you're not mowing it, you will allow the ants to build up their little ant hills and hummocks. Now, for some of you, that may be a bad thing, especially, again, if you have young children, dogs, that kind of thing. But it's also the reason that the birds come in. They come land to actually feed off the ants. 
So there is a, a trade-off that you need to weigh up. The ground will also become less even and less flat. The grass naturally grows in hummocks and clumps. And so you will lose that flat lawn over time. And probably lastly, and most importantly, you need to consider the self seeding. You're going to allow grass seed to ripen and therefore set seed. It will blow. So if you are going to have grass seed blown, where is it going to blow to? My lawn is surrounded by patio and paving. And yes, it does create more lawns, more, more weed seeds in the paving. So this is something you just need to consider before you may set an area aside for not mowing. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. We've got lots more advice on the website, plantplots.com. It's packed with garden design advice, with planting ideas and helpful hints to help you make your garden better. And please do hit the subscribe now button. Thank you for watching.